I'm Jaden. everybody my name is Jason I'm Ken I'm Jaden I'm Nicole I'm Eli and this is the Yahoo and the Torah channel and we thank you guys very very much this is our Shabbat service we love you guys very very much we thank you guys for being with us and it is a day of rest and um, let us begin with our uh, with a first of all the Shema let's start with this here O Yashrael Yahua Eloheinu Yahua is one and you shall love Yahua Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up, and you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Good morning, everybody. Cade, will you please get us a word of prayer, please? Mr. Father, thank you for this day, and I thank you for the Shabbat. I think that it's a beautiful day outside. I thank you that it's a day where we can spend with you, a day where we can come as your people, not perfect, not all whole, not all together, but I ask that you give us wholeness, that you give fix the brokenness, that you fix the sadness, you bro fix anything that is that is wrong with us, Yah, that you are will shine your light down, that you give us your mercies and your grace. I thank you for this Shabbat, and I thank you for knowing that we will need a day of rest, for knowing that we will need a day that we can take off to recharge ourselves. I thank you for being so kind and thoughtful for us that you would do this for us. And I ask that we bless this, that we sanctify it, that we do not make this day a waste. I thank you for everything you've done for us. In Yahushua's name, amen. All right, all right. So how are you guys doing out there? How's everyone in the chat room? Um, what do we have going on? Where's the, what do we got going on? We have Brother Grant, Glenn. 
We have Zachariah, Rhiannon, the Grand, Emissary, Joanna, and Emissary of Elohim, and Dreg. Yep, and much love to everybody out there. You guys are our little family. We got some bad news that the Grand was... In was well, this week we were all kind of devastated because we heard that the grand was not going to have internet we thought it was at the end of this week we thought we were going to lose her this week um but i guess she gets a little more of time with us and um again that was a tragedy for our family we were all very very sad about that so we're glad uh we have grandma back for a little bit longer and yeah willing she'll be with us for quite a while hopefully she'll figure out the internet things and her son will figure that out and so um thus begin so we have chris and lisa as well hi chris and lisa how are you bob Hope, z and bob z it's hey bob z. oh it's chris, chris. Uh, what'd you say chris and lisa i said chris oh. and then lisa and bob uh, chris from the bob z uh youtube channel he has been helping us out with a tremendous amount of uh bible translations and before i even begin that let's take a quick look if you guys take a look at this right here is at the yahoo and the torah website if you click on the online scriptures this is what there's about five of us that are working there's three or four of us that are working full-time and one of us work one or two are working a part-time and as you can see as the weeks go through the scriptures are adding up and we are getting them in there and we are proofreading them and literally our entire family has now um this is our work this is what we're doing and and so when we're done with that we'll be very very happy and this will be out uh full for everybody free of charge and um that's just kind of what we're doing here so thank you guys very much for joining us. What we're going to be doing here, what we do every single Shabbat is we go over the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. And it doesn't matter how bad of a day that you guys are having. It doesn't matter what kind of a world you're having. What matters is that we are keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. We will run into problems. We will run into opposition. We will run into bad days. We will run into bad weeks. We will run into bad months. But they will be far worse if we do not observe and we are not keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. And most people have taken those and they put them inside of a trash can or they put them on the cross and nailed the laws to the cross. And I would like to encourage folks and to understand that that is the greatest mistake that you guys can ever make is to get rid of the laws of our creator and so what we're about to do is we are going to go over there's about 170 ish laws that we have and um jade you ready for this yep okay all right the very first one is be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it have to manure the fish fowl and every living creature the herb bearing and every tree is for food man and woman should build their own families master sin every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you do not eat the blood Walk before me and be perfect. Guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the peace of love and bread, Matzah. There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebron. And I want to stop on this certain point here because I had an email that came in. And um, it was from a gentleman and he wanted to know about marriage interracial marriage and what the Torah said about interracial marriage and this is what I would like to talk about real quickly because there are a lot of people that have um, it, it, it is kind of a taboo thing for a lot of people and in the Torah we know that there is there's nothing on skin color there, there's no such thing there's nothing that what we have right here in this commandment 17 is there is one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ebrahim what that means is a stranger can be any skin color. It can be any denomination. You can be anything, anywhere. When you come into the Torah, when you come into the covenant and keeping the law, statutes, and commands, and you have the faith of Messiah, Yahushua, it doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter anything at all. You become a child of the Most High. There is no definition of skin color. There is no anything of that. And so my answer to this gentleman was, there's one Torah for the stranger, one for the Ebrahim. It, it doesn't matter what your skin color is. It, it matters that your heart is circumcised to our creator and that you are your hands are clean, your, your heart is clean, your mind is clean, and you'll never have that cleanness and you'll never be that person unless you're keeping the laws, statutes, and commands. And so there is no such thing as a as like race and like should you intermarry. If your mate, if, if somebody is, is following the laws, statutes, and commandments, and that is that is a, a potential person for you. That that's where it belongs. And um, yeah, and uh, yeah, the grand yeah, marriage is everything's interracial. I mean, we're we're all over the place. I mean, we are just a a um, a stew pot of all all sorts of stuff. And the thing is, it 
the only thing that clarifies somebody is, are you in covenant with our creator or are you not? And if you're not, that makes you a Gentile. And that is not a good thing to have. You don't want a little star that says, I'm a Gentile, because Gentiles are, there's no house of Gentile when we're talking about the new or the renewed covenant. There's a house of Yisrael and the house of Yehuda. And so we need to pick the houses that we want to be in. And it, it, there's no house of Christian or house of Mormon or anything of that. All right. So let's continue on. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name. Do not. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. And do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yahuwah's laws for criminals. Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifices to other gods. Fatherless or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. Do you borrow your neighbor's say. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress the stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feasts of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends you for you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use this anointing on oil on a normal person. Do not make or use this perfume on a normal person. Do not eat the fat. What will you say you are going to do? Return with your neighbors. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corner of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not do a falsehood to fraud your neighbor. Do not lie, or be a liar. Pay your workers the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke, rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with the taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct ways and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Omer, Count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Shamtarah. Keep, Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shimni Atzeret. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. The words used on the four corners of your garments. The laws of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. The Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do yeah. not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. Shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Find the laws upon your hand and the promise between your eyes. Or write the laws on your doorpost. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that died of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe your increase of seed, your right ear. Laws at the end of seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant ashlar poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. The prophet has Deuteronomy. Do not remove your nearest property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is get double portions. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to women. Find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies, or the eggs. Take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that they live on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was his pledge. 
Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man is put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. If Leave it for the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when you tread that grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. Okay, uh, that is it. Um, how do we, anyone new in the chat room? Um, we have somebody that I have no idea how to say the name. Uh, I think it's Kajal Lange Tajane. Hi. I think. Hi. And Sylvia's here. Hi, Sylvia. Jeannie, not of this world, is also here. Hi, Jeannie. Hope you are well, dear sis. Hope you guys are all well. Okay, so we are heading into our reading for today. And we are into Genesis 31. And is are you ready, Eli, or you just glanced yep. onto the chat room? All right. Okay, all right. Where's it at up top? All right. So for those who do not know, what we're reading, we're reading out of the Targums at the top. And the Targums is one of these, we don't know if it's fully doctrine or not. Um, it's one of these ones where we're taking the bones, we're spitting them out, and we're chewing on the meat and making sure that is digestible for us. And in the bottom, we have the uh, ex Hallelujah scriptures, and it is now officially Yahoo's scriptures, and it is free of charge. You're absolutely, completely free of charge. You can download this at any point and uh, give the word of Yah out for free have a copy of the Torah and um, away we okay. 31 and he heard the words of Laban's sons real quick sorry guys and he heard the words of Laban's sons saying Jacob has taken away all that was all that was our fathers and from what what belonged to our father has made all this wealth and Jacob would look at the face of Laban and see that it was not toward him as before and Yahuwah said to Jacob Return to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I am with you. And Yaakov sent and called Rechel and Leah to, to the field to his flock and said to them, I see your father's face, that he is not toward me as before, but the Elohim of my father has been with me. And you know that I have served your father with all my strength. Yet your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but Elohim did not allow him to do evil to me. When he said this, the speckled are your wages, then all the flocks bore speckled. And when he said this, the streaked are your wages, then all the flocks bore streaked. So Elohim has taken, has taken away the livestock of your father and given them to me. So it's here it seems like like, like something happened where he's like, like, you have the spotted ones, and then he started seeing all the spotted ones, like, okay, now you got the streaked ones. So it's like two yeah. different types, but I think he ended up with maybe both. Maybe there was, yeah, there's something. So what do we know? We, we know that he was, the uh, spotted and the streaked were his, right? right? Yeah, and the lambs that were black. The lambs that were black were his. Mm -hmm. And so anything else. And all the white ones were Laban's. But then we know, we know from other things that um, he was taking, when, when um, Jacob was taking the, the, like the lame or the weak, the, the smaller of the animals, and that's what he was basically giving, let, letting them, you know, go off and, and breed their own for, you know, whatever it was. And the small would breed the small ones and the large would breed the, the large one. All right. Um, where are we at on this? Are we going to the... I think I've read 10. Okay. Read We're reading 10 still at the bottom. Okay. You with us here? Mm -hmm. You busy? Okay. And it came to be at the time when he, when, he, oh man, we have a typo right here. Can you see that? Yeah. And it came to be at the time when he flocks, can see? We missed the typo. Where is this? Yep. We didn't we just read this? Yep. yep. Wow. Here we have a typo right here. Okay. Sorry, guys. We're just uh, in shock. Okay. And it came to be at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and looked in a dream and saw the rams which leaped up on the flocks were streaked, speckled, and mauled. And the messenger of Elohim spoke to me in a dream saying, Yaakov, I said, here I am. Do we need to go this up? Uh, you can just finish this whole thing. Yeah, I so. And he said, lift up your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked, speckled, and mottled. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the El of Bet El, where you anointed the standing column and where you made a vow to me. Now rise up, get out of this land, and return to the land of your relatives. Okay, now we're heading up to the Targums and we're going to see what this says as far as this goes. Okay, but he heard the words of the sons of Laban saying, Jacob hath taken all that our that was our father's, and from that which was our father's, he hath made himself all the glory of these riches. And Jacob observed the looks of Laban, and behold, they were not peaceful toward him as yesterday and as before it. And Yahuwah said to Jacob, Return to the land of thy fathers and to thy native place, and my word shall be for thy help. 
And Jacob sent Naphtali, who was a swift messenger. And he sent Rachel, and, and he called Rachel and Leah. And they came into the field unto his flock. And he said to them, I consider the looks of your father, and behold, they are not peaceful with me as yesterday and as before it. But the Elohim my father hath been, hath been to my aid, and you know that with all my strength I have served your father, but your father hath deceived me and hath changed. And then the other post says, hath commuted. My wage is ten portions, yet Yahuwah hath not given him power to do me evil. If now he said, the street shall be my wage, thy wages, all the sheep bear street. And if now he said, the spotted foot shall be thy wages, all the sheep bear those which are, were spotted in their feet. And Yahuwah hath taken away the flock of your father and hath given it to me. And then the other version of it says, and the word of Yahuwah hath taken away. Okay. And it was at the time when the flock conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the goats which rose upon the flock were spotted in their feet or streaked or white in their backs. And the angel of Yahuwah said to me in a dream, Jacob, and I said, behold me. And then the, um, the Jerusalem, the other translation says, Jacob answered in the holy tongue and said, behold me. And he said, lift up now thine eyes and see. All the goats that rise up on the flock are spotted in the feet or streaked or white in their backs because all the injury that Laban hath done thee is manifest before me. I am Elba, Eloba, who did reveal myself to thee at Beth El, where thou didst anoint the pillar and swear the oath before me. Arise now, go forth from this land and return to the land of my birth. Okay, now we're heading back to the bottom. Anyone have anything on this? At all? Um, not really. I mean, we do get a little bit more stuff on there, but not not. Yeah, I don't. I don't think different. that. Uh, I don't know if he changed the the wages. Just reading in this, like, I mean, he did change the wages, but the the part where he's like, he's just basically talking to his his wives and trying to convince them that, look, if I would have changed, if if I would have changed the way they were, like non streak to streak, they would also all be mine. If I if I did it to plain, I mean, that might they, be true. They would all be mine. It's like whatever he's whatever he's doing, Elohim is blessing that, and it's it's making it for his favor. Okay, now we're heading back to the bottom. And Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, Do we still have any portion or inheritance in our father's house? Are we not reckoned by him as strangers? For he has sold us and, and also entirely consumed our silver. So it seems they've been upset about that the entire time. Like having him, instead of like having an oral marriage, having like get to know him. He's like, yeah, you just work for me and this is yours. Their father was the reason that everything that was whacked out in their lives to begin with was whacked out in their lives right he's tricked he tricked the husband of one of the daughters right the, that after that day after that moment after that wedding they would never ever look at their dad the same you couldn't right you would never ever be able to do that you're dealing with people's emotions you're dealing with people's livelihood you're dealing with, with um <laughs> you know marriages and um you know, when you trick somebody like that, Jacob's going to hate you. The girls are going to hate you. Um, the girls didn't end up with who they wanted to right out of the gate, right? Um, Leah got her the husband, which she wanted first. And, I mean, there would have been, this would have been a, basically, you know, and you could see it because we, we see all through scriptures, it was, it was a completely jacked up situation all the way through. Okay. Are we not reckoned, 15, are we not reckoned by him as strangers? For he has sold us and also entirely consumed our silver. For all the wealth which Elohim has taken from our father are ours and our children's. Now then, do whatever Elohim has told you. So Yaakov rose and put his sons and his wives on camels. And he drove off all his livestock and all his possessions which he had acquired. His property of the livestock which he had acquired in Patamaram to go to his father Yitzhak in the land of Canaan. And when Laban had gone to shear, shear his sheep, Rachel stole the house idols that were her father's. And Jacob stole the heart of Laban, the Armenian, because he did not inform him that he was about to flee. Okay. And that's what Laban says, too. Laban says that a lot. He's stealing his heart. What do you guys make of that when he steals his heart? Uh, I think it breaks his heart more than anything. Like, like, uh, I think maybe the thing he wants most. Yeah, I mean, life. even even if you, even if there was dysfunction in there, the last thing you're going to want to see is your entire family gone when you come back with no way to say goodbye or none of that, none of, nothing like that. And the problem is um, Jacob's leaving with a, tr a very, very slow um, progression, right? He has all those animals and you, you, there's no way he's going to be able to get very far. Uh, the sheep aren't gonna be running. Yeah, the sheep aren't gonna be running. He would have killed them all. And so he, that's the thing is, is Laban, is that he would know that Laban is definitely gonna catch up with him at a certain point. Okay, now we're back to the top. Do you have anything? Okay. And Rachel answered with the consent of Leah and said to him, Can there now be yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? 
Are we not considered by him as strangers? For he hath sold us, and eating he hath eaten our money. Therefore all the wealth that Yahuwah hath taken from our father is ours and our children's. And now all that Yahuwah hath said to thee, do. And then the other version says, Are we not considered strangers to him? For he hath sold us, and behold, he is not willing to give us our dowry. Okay. And Jacob arose and set his children and his wives upon camels, and he led all his herds and his substance, which he had obtained in Padam Aram, to go unto Ichak, his father, in the land of Canaan. And then the other version says his treasure. Okay. And Laban had gone to share his flock, and Rachel stole the images. For they had slain a man, a firstborn, and had cut off his head. They salted it with salt and balsams and wrote incantations on a plate of gold and put it under his tongue and set it up in the wall and it spake with them. And unto such their father bowed himself. Okay, let's talk about that real um, quick. That is completely messed up. Have you got, you, I, this, is, we, we, this is the first place you will hear this. And I don't, do, is this anywhere else? Is this anything like Jasher? I feel like there's something like some Jasher. You know, we, we, don't, we don't know anything about idols except our creator says, don't bow down to them, don't worship them. They are sticks and stones. But this is very interesting, this account right here. And um, it says they had cut off his head. Um, they had slain a man, a firstborn, and they cut off his head. They salted it with salt and balsam. So, I mean, they... They, uh, they brought demons into it. Well, yeah, and wrote incantations on a gold plate. I mean, basically, they wrote, like, some sort of evil stuff on a gold plate and put it under the, the tongue of this this uh, skull. I mean, it's the most creepy thing that you could ever imagine. And these people, um, this is this is what she stole. So she's walking around with this, with this um, a, a skull of a, of a person, right? <laughs> the firstborn, of all things. Okay. Yeah, where are we at right here? Uh, we are, let's see, we... Uh, yeah, and Jacob. Jacob stole the knowledge of Laban the Armonite in that he did not show him where he went, when he went. And he went, he and all that he had. Okay, hold on. So it says that Jacob stole the knowledge of Laban the Armonite. In the other, other scriptures, it says that um, Rachel stole that. Do you think they were in cahoots? Did they steal yeah, I think it? so. Because it, 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 it says Jacob doesn't know. Jacob Steal something else in in regular version too. Okay, let's continue. Um, and he went, he and all that he had, and he arose and crossed the Ferret and set his face to ascend toward the mountain of Gilad, because he saw by the Ruha Kakodesh that from thence would be deliverance from his sons in the days of Jeff Jephthah, who was Av Gilad. What is Jephthah? I have no idea. Anyone who knows that is? Well, that's a few down too. Okay. But you know you're in 21. All right, 21. So we're heading back to the bottom version. And he fled with all that he had, and he rose up and passed over the river, and headed toward the mountains of Gilad. And on the third day, Laban was told that Yaakov had fled. Then he took his brothers with him and pursued him for seven days' journey, and he overtook him in the mountains of Gilad. And it would have been obvious where this sheep guy... Sheep reduced low. Well, yeah, you would, you would, it was obvious where you have a herd of sheep going. Yeah. You would just follow the trail, right? Mm -hmm. Everywhere the trail went, they would destroy... With five cows, you're going to see there's a big trail with a, hundreds of sheep. Yeah, there's going to be... It would be yeah. easy to follow. Yeah, you, you, all the you'd land, the grass would all be dead. I mean, it would be mud and muck that you're and walking on. And he has on. goats, too. Yeah. And goats, yeah. It would just be smashed. Okay. But in a dream by night, Elohim came to Laban, the Armenian, and said to him, Guard yourself that you do not speak to Jacob, either good or evil. All right, what do you guys make of that? Where you're not, you don't speak to him good or evil. Um, basically, you're not supposed to say anything good, nothing bad. Um, I guess. Well, how how, how does that even work? I mean, you can't. I mean, it explains it in Targums a little bit. Okay. Well, uh, I don't. Know, I guess you can't just like just say hi and that's it. It says you can't start speaking to him good, and then turn around and start speaking evil to him. So okay. he can't give him praise and then start bashing him. Oh. Okay, and so 25, this is where you... Uh, yeah. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mountains, and Laban with his brothers pitched in the mountains of Gilad. And Laban said to Jacob, What have you done that you have stolen my heart and driven my daughters off like captives taken with the sword? Why did you flee secretly and deceive me and not inform me? And I would have sent you away with joy and songs, with tambourine and lyre. And you did not allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Now you have been foolish to do this. It is in the power of my hand to do evil to you. But the Elohim of your father spoke to me last night, saying, guard yourself, that you do not speak to Jacob, either good or evil. So how does this guy say that he has, it says it's in the power of his hand to do good or evil, but Elohim told him not to do I don't know, evil. He's got like, what, three kids and then him? I feel like the other son of Israel, which is they'd all be yeah, down. Yeah, there's too many for Laban to try to kill. Yeah, but he says it's in his hand to do good or evil. Yahoo had told him not to do it. He, he would get smoted. I mean, it's not in his hand to do good or evil. Yeah, he, he obviously doesn't, doesn't believe in Yah. 
I think he does. Laban? I don't, I think, think, so. You don't think so. I think he has two. I think he has all these gods. Like some, there's one spoke to him. And, so. he goes to. Huh. And, and, then, it, and it even says that when they make the covenant, he does it to his idol. Huh. All right, thirty. And now you have gone. You have gone because you greatly long for your father's house. But why did you steal my mighty ones? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid. For I said, lest you tear your daughters away from me. So he just said that he, he like, admitted he stole his no, money. No, uh, third the next verse, or yeah. third two. But he just answered him, though. Why did he steal? Uh, he, was, he, was, he was replying to the first part of his question, not the second part. Okay. He replied to the second part. Of the All right. With whomever you find your mighty ones, let him not live. In the presence of our brothers, see for yourself what is with me, and take it with you. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. Okay. So he still didn't explain what he said on this. He, he, he no, so, said, it, so it's, we're back at 26, right? He goes back to 26, and Laban said to Jacob, What have you done? Why have you stolen my heart and driven my daughters off like Cab was taken with the sword? And he responds to him, and he goes, uh, Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for you said, Lest you tear your daughters away from me. Ah, uh, okay. So maybe he's not talking about the mighty ones. All right, where are we at? Uh, now we're on 33. 33 or 34? Oh, yeah, 33. 33. And Laban went to Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the tents of the two female servants. But he did not find them. And he came out of Leah's tent, and entered Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the house idols, and put them in the camel's saddle, and sat on them. And Laban searched all about the tent, but did not find them. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my master that I am unable to rise before you, for the way of women is with me. And he searched, searched but did not find the house idols. And Jacob was wroth and contended with Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my transgression? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me? Now that you have searched all my goods, what have you found of all your household goods? Put it here before my brothers and your brothers and let them decide between the two of us. These 20 years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried their young and I have not eaten the rams of your sheep. That which was torn by beasts I did not bring to you. I myself bore the loss of it. You required it from my hand, whether stolen by day or, not, or stolen by night. I was by day the heat consumed me and the frost by night and my sleep fled before my eyes. These 20 years I have been in your house. I served you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flock and you have changed my wages 10 times. Unless the Elohim of my father, the Elohim of Abram and, of, and the awe of Yitzhak had been with me, you would have, been, you would have sent me away empty handed Elohim has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands and rendered judgment last night. You have a spacing issue yep. right here. Did you not get a spacing issue in 42? No. We've got to fix that. Spacing issue, too. Sorry, guys. We're, uh, nah, you're back up. we're heading up the targets. We're doing some translation and editing with y'all. Okay. But after Jacob was gone, we're at the top again. But after Jacob had gone, the shepherds went to the well but found no water, and they waited three days. If that it might again overflow, but it overflowed not. And then came to Laban. They came to, and then came they to Laban on the third day. And he knew that Jacob had fled, because through his righteousness it had flowed twenty years. And it was when the shepherds were gathered together, they sought to water the flock, but were not able. And they waited two and three days, if that the well might overflow, but it overflowed not. And then they came to they, and then came they to Laban in the third day, because Jacob had fled. Yeah, I think you just said the same yeah, thing that's twice. The Jerusalem. You, didn't, you missed the Jerusalem. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the same thing. So that's one of the things that we didn't know, right? We had heard about that, that the um, that this well, and this is something we did not know, J.D. with us here, mm -hmm. that we did not know the well was, um, first of all, we didn't know the rock was extremely heavy on top of the well, and that was what we learned from the Targums. And we did not know that when Jacob came, all the wells started flowing and they were overflowing. And, you know, we talked about that quite a bit on what it takes to make a well overflow. And that's a lot of water. Okay. And then we're back at the top. And he took his kinsmen with him and pursued after him going seven days and overtook him while sojourning in Mount Gilead, offering praise and praying before his Elohim. And there an angel with a word from me. This is really hard to read. And there came an angel with a word from before Yahuwah. And he drew the sword against Laban the deceitful in a dream of the night and said to him, beware lest thou speak with Jacob from good to evil. And Laban came upon Jacob and Jacob had spread his tent in the mountain and Laban made his brethren, brethren aside in the Mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, what hast thou done? Thou hast stolen my knowledge and led away my daughters like captives of the sword. Why didst thou hide from me and thou wouldst go and steal my knowledge and not tell me? 
For if thou hadst told me, I would have sent thee away with myrrh and with hymns and with tambourines and with harps. Neither hast thou suffered me to kiss the sons of my daughters, nor my daughters. Now hast thou been foolish in what thou hast done. There is sufficiency in my hand to do evil with thee. So there he is again saying he could do evil. And then the other thing says there are, there are strength and ability. Okay, then continue on. He goes, but the Elohim of thy father spake with me in the evening, saying, be careful of speaking with Jacob from good to evil. Now going thou wilt go, because desiring thou hast desired the house of thy father. But why hast thou stolen the images of my idols? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, because I feared and said, lest thou violently take away thy daughters from me. With whomever thou shalt find the images of thy idols, let him die before his time. And again, he said the same thing. It, 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 he, I know that it might be answering the question up above, but the end of it, why hast thou stolen the images of my idols? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, because I feared and said, lest thou violently take away thy daughters from me. So I don't know. Maybe he knew. I don't know. Before all our brethren, take knowledge of what with me is thine and take it. But Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into the tent of Jacob and into the tent of Leah and into the tent of the two concubines, but found not. And he went out from the tent of Leah and entered the tent of Rachel. But Rachel had taken the images and laid them in the panniers of the camels and sat upon them. And he searched all the tent, but found not. And he said, let it not be displeasing in my Lord's eyes that I am unable to rise before thee because I have the way of women. And he searched, but found not the images. And the anger of Jacob took fire, and he contended with Laban. And Jacob answered and said to Laban, What is my sin, and what my, and what my transgression, that thou hast so eagerly come after me? Having therefore searched all my vessels, what thou hast thou found of all the vessels of thy house? Lay now the matter before my brethren and thy brethren, and let them decide the truth between us two. These twenty years have I been with thee. The ewes and the, thy goats have not failed, and the price of the rams of the flock I have not eaten. That torn by wild beasts I have not brought to thee. For, I, for had I sinned, from my hand thou wouldst have required it. What was stolen in the day by men that I had made, that I have, that have I made good. And what was stolen in the night by wild beasts was also made good. And in the Jerusalem post, it says this, or the Jerusalem translation says, The dead I have not brought to thee. Every one which had fled from the number, I have made that good. Of my hands thou hast required it, and what thieves stole by day or wild beasts devoured by night, I have made good. I have been in the field, by day the heat hath devoured me, and the cold by night, and sleep hath parted from me. These twenty years have I been in thy house, serving thee, fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy sheep, and thou hast changed my wages ten parts. Unless the Elohim of my father, the Elohim of Abraham, and he whom Isaac feareth, had been in my help, even now hadst thou sent me away empty, but my affliction and the travail of my hands are manifest before Yahuwah, and therefore he admonished thee in the evening. Okay, now we're heading back down to the bottom. Yeah, I'm 43. Anything going on, chat room? Um, no, but I think we'll have something to discuss afterwards, because I don't think this has anything to do with what we're reading right now. Okay, here we go. And Laban answered and said to Yaakov, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and this flock is my flock. All that you see is mine. But what shall I do today to these, my daughters, or to do their children whom they have born? All right, is, is Laban correct? Are these, uh, I mean, it's obviously his daughters. Um, then he says, these children are my children. They're not I mean, there, I mean, there's grandchildren. Grandchildren. I think back in the day, there's more like, they, like the dad of the daughter had more ownership over the children than they do now. Maybe. That could be. That could be. Okay, 44. And now, come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and it shall be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and put it as a standing column. And Jacob said to his brothers, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap. And they ate there on the heap. And Laban called it Yegar Sahudatha. But Jacob called it Galed. And Laban said, this heap is a witness between you and me today. That is why its name was called Galed. Also Mitzvah. Because he said, let Yahuwah watch between you and me when we are out of each other's sight. Is that a site? Is that a period at the end of yours? Did we miss that one? If we missed it, there's a, a period on it. On site? On 49. 49? There's a period. We jacked this one up. We got to reread this whole thing. Okay, 50. If you afflict my daughters, or if you take other wives besides my daughters, although no man is with us, see, Elohim is witness between you and me. And Laban said to Jacob, 
See this heap and see the standing column which I have placed between you and me. This heap is a witness and the standing column is a witness that I do not pass beyond this heap to you and you do not pass beyond this heap and this standing column to me for evil. The Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Nacor, and the Elohim of their fathers rightly rule between us. And Jacob swore by the awe of his father Yitzhak. And Jacob brought an offering on the mountain and called his brothers to eat bread. And they ate bread and spent the night on the mountain. And Laban rose up early in the morning and kissed his sons and daughters and Barak them. And Laban left and returned to his place. Okay, now let's head up to the top part of this. Now, Laban, the, the, here's, a, here's a spoiler alert that you do not actually know. You have to read Jasher to figure this one out. But um, as soon as they were done, they made this, this, this uh, little oath right here and they said they wouldn't mess with each other. Laban immediately sends his kids back over to Esau and um, he has Esau all fired up. The whole reason Esau comes and tries to get rid of uh, Jacob right here is because of the acts that Laban does right after this. So Laban goes back by himself, but he sends all of his kids and all this stuff back over to Esau and, and that's, that's where that went down. Okay, now we're back at the Targums at the top. And Laban answered and said to Jacob, The children whom thou hast received of thy wives are my children, and the children whom they may bear will be reputed as mine. And the sheep are mine, sheep, and all that thou seest is mine. And for my daughters, what can I do this day? And for the soils which they have borne. I think it's supposed to be souls which they have borne. The target was this, Jack. I'm glad I didn't edit this one. Okay, and now, come, let us strike a covenant, I and thou, and it shall be for a witness between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said to his sons, whom he called his brethren, collect stones. And they collected stones and made him mound. And they ate upon the mound. And Laban called it Ogar Sahid. But Jacob called it in the holy tongue Gal Ed. And the observatory also it was called because he said, Yahuwah shall observe between me and thee when we are hidden each man from his neighbor. If thou shalt afflict my daughters during that, doing them injury, and if thou take upon my daughters, there is no man to judge us. The word of Yahuwah, seeing this is the witness between me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this mound. And behold the pillar which thou hast reared between me and thee. This mound is a witness, and the, this pillar is a witness that I may not pass beyond this mound to thee, and that thou mayest not pass beyond the mound and this pillar to do harm. The Elohim of Abraham and the Elohim of Nacor shall judge between us the Elohim of their fathers, but Jacob swear by the Elohim who his father Ishak feared. And Jacob slew sacrifices in the mount and invited the, his kinsmen who came with Laban to help themselves to bread or strengthen themselves with bread, and they helped themselves to bread and lodged in the mount. And Laban arose in the morning and kissed the, the sons of Jacob and his daughters and blessed them. And Laban went and returned to his place. Now, that sounds good, except we know that Laban didn't quite, he, Laban, he went to his place, but then he sent all of his uh, kids, all the people that went with him, they sent them to Esau to try to get Jacob killed. Laban's still yeah, Laban's, hurting Jacob. Yeah, Laban's bad dude, news. Oh, yeah, so, he couldn't get Conan for like four seconds. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't make it. I mean, he's so, just... I want to go back to the one thing where I talked about he shouldn't take other wives besides his daughters. Yeah. Because um, yeah, I don't think he wants them not to be loved because he feels like if he takes their daughter, his wife, his daughters won't be loved. So, I mean, but he technically already has only one daughter being, of his being loved. Right, but he's given them four daughters. And so, yeah, I, I don't know what that is all about. Other I mean, than I, mean I think only one of them really gets loved out of the four. So it's like... Well, Leah gets loved at the end. Yeah. I mean, towards the end. At I, the I, end, I, but I mean... Her life's, her life's very sad, though. I mean, yeah, most of I mean, like... It's really like a terrible thing to get loved at the end instead of in the beginning of your yeah. entire life, man. I mean, that's a horrible way to do it. Yeah, abs absolutely. Live. Absolutely. But I guess better late than never, I suppose. But, I mean, it does suck. And so, all right. Well, that is that. Um, what do we have in the chat room? Okay. So, Drag says, what is Numbers 25 talking about? It says, in Israel, Bode and Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Then in Ezra 9. What are we talking about? What, what verses? Numbers 25. Okay. Okay, and so what, what do we, what's the question though, exactly? I don't know, he just says, what is in Numbers 25 talking about? And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. So basically, it's, they had a, this, okay? Go ahead, keep going. Okay, so basically they had this situation several times where they would go into other lands as they were traveling, and they would start intermarrying, intermingling with these people and have and, children. And idol people. worship. And what they don't know is that these people were Satanists, and these people were an unclean generation of bloodline. They were had Nephilim DNA. They had um, pagan worship going on, and it would turn all the children of Israel away to basically commit these sins, commit the idol worship, basically corrupt their DNA, and things like that. 
So I think this goes back to the question about the guy asking about interracial marriage, I oh. believe is what he was talking about here. Okay, I'm so, not 100% sure. So that. nowadays, right, we don't know who is, who's going to be a uh, canine. Right? You don't know yeah. whose blood. There's no way of telling who's a uh, Nephilim. You're going to have to pray for the best. You're going to have to pray that the person who finds a Torah key or teaches the Torah or something, and that's that's the best you can do is find someone that is in the Torah because you don't know if someone's going to end up a giant nephew. We're six right? yeah, we're six thousand years from creation, and so we're it's the days of those kind of the bloodlines, and you know that that's what the that's what the Jews of Israel will say is they're like, well, we're the bloodline, and that is the big thing is everyone's like, oh, am I a blood? Am I a Jew? There there is no you know again there's there's that's you're only talking one tribe when you're even talking to Jews. Our creator says anybody who keeps my laws, statutes, and commandments is a child of the most high. And that is what we have to qualify everything with is that's where we want to get with and to become with. And so I don't know if that answers that or it gets so more clear. So he was wondering, so do these people not have a chance to be grafted in? Well, I, you know, I, I don't know about that. But we, we do know because Moses' wife, she wasn't from. She uh, was, um, she, what was one thing called? Well, I can't remember this. What? what you just wrote this? How did you? Yeah, no, I don't know. It's just the name, your name isn't coming to me. I mean, she was not from a regular tribe. No, she was. But I think the point the point of this whole thing is is that guys, let's discuss this openly. Not Midian. Should, she's from Midian. Midian. Yeah, she's a Midian. Right. And the the point of all of this is that if you had, especially back in the days, if you had a tribe, if you had all of these people who are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, you had twelve tribes, you had tons and tons of people, you had a lots of them, you wanted to stay within your tribe. Every single time Israel moved in or moved around or got in with other people, they would they would intermingle with them. And it, it's not the intermingling part of it. It's that during the intermingling, you fall away from our creator. You start doing what they did, just like Solomon, right? Solomon went and at first he was the wisest guy ever known. You know, he was the man. And then towards the end, he seems like, uh, you know, a, a devil in a lot of regards because of the stuff that he is doing. And... Um, his wives turn him away from our creator. And that is what our creator doesn't want us to do. And it's very, very easy that you can get into a family. You can find a beautiful woman and she is not a Torah keeper. And she's like in another family and you intermarry into that. You have no idea. You'll be celebrating Christmas. You'll be celebrating all this other stuff pretty soon. You know, you'll bring that down the family line. And that's what it is all about is being separated from that point. But we can, all, everybody can be grafted in. And if you go back into when they were all exiting Egypt, we're talking like 600,000 to a million slaves, people that were every generation, every color, everything, they all inter intermingled in. There was only one law that you had to keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator if you wanted to be a part of that. And so, yeah, I think anybody can be grafted in. I think what, what they're, they're talking about in, in this is that, you know, they, they, they wandered off. They went outside of their tribes. They started hanging out with the other people and then they corrupted themselves. And when you corrupt yourselves, you're not, you know, you'll pass that right on down your, your lines. Your, your kids will be corrupted as well because they won't be keeping the Torah and they, they see you, you know, celebrating all their stuff and all of a sudden you just, you killed your family line and that's the, the curses of not keeping the Torah is that it's generational curses that just because, you know, the, the curse is, the curse of itself is that you don't keep the Torah and that will bring all sorts of horrible curses to you. So. And just like the Grand and Rhiannon both said, Ruth, she was also grafted in. Yeah, out. Ruth, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Ruth was grafted in. Um, yeah, Messiah's line is not a, a, a full blood line of, of, the, of the tribes. It, it is mixed, and there's all sorts of mixed stuff to it. We are a mixed stew pot, and that is, you know, that's the cool thing about this. There's only one requirement that we have to have that we want to find the kingdom, right? And that is to be in covenant with our creator through the laws, statutes, and commands, and the faith of Messiah, Yahushua, right? It's, it's a two-way street. If we don't have our Messiah, if we don't have the Torah, then we're, 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 we're in bad shape. So. Dreg says nothing new under the sun, same problems today. Yeah, say, say exactly. Same problems today, and it's the same stuff, and it's just, it's a little more, I wouldn't even say it's more complicated. It, it, it might be a little more complicated because we don't have definition of tribes. We don't have, you know, a people. We don't have a, a 10 other tribes or 11 tribes that we can we can fit into we have us and we're all you know we're coming out of captivity and i guess you know all of us that are sitting here this is the the power of the internet and the power of technology and the power of the end times is that we can all hang out in this kind of a, a um, an avenue we don't all have to be at each other's doorstep but because of technology we are all sitting around this big table and we're all praising elohim we're all you know trying to find this kingdom to come and, and this road forward and you know, it, it's this is a it's an amazing time to be alive, and so I have nothing else. Anyone else have anything here? Glenn just says that's what happened to Solomon. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yep. 
Solomon. Oh, and yeah, Miss, Miss Sylvia, much love to you, sis and grand. Um, I'm just watching the chat here as you guys go. All right, I think that's it. Much love to you all. We uh, are. We have the Aaron Buzzing. Oh, the ironic blessing. All right, yes, yeah. we have an ironic blessing, and it is a it is a blessing for everybody. And it you know when when you guys hear this, um, understand that our Creator works in blessings and works in things of this nature. So just know this blessing is for you guys, Jade. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe, saying, Speak unto Elaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Okay. All right, guys. Much love. Eli, what, uh, what song are we doing? Run the Heavens. Are we doing Run the Heavens? Oh, yeah. That's what you said on. All right. So hopefully we can get this Slager family dancing on. So where's that? All right, guys. Much love to you. This is one of our favorite songs. Mr. Cole's kind of over it, but we love it. Here he is. Oh! <laughs> 
Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you very much. We love you guys. We're so sorry for the dogs. We're trying to get your kids to like be uh, quiet in a, in a store, and it doesn't happen. We love you guys very, very much. May Yahoo bless you and keep you. May His light forever shine upon you guys. We love you all. Goodbye. Bye.